OK, uh, so let's start our uh, QuickSight lab. So this lab will learn how to use QuickSight uh, to visualize data. Uh, so first, when you go to the login uh, web page, so the account name is i340. Uh, so you can always change the account name. However, in this class, in this lab, we are all using i340. And next, you're going to type your email address and also the password that you set up. And we log in. And so here, uh, we can see our uh, previous analysis that we created during the lecture and also the data set we already have. Uh, so we are going to create a new data set for the house price. So let's click new data set. And again, we are going to use a post Jerry circle. And we are going to follow in the same procedure. So that types the data source name. So you can give any data source name you like. The server. And the post is 5432. And the database name is PostGRES. And also username. So my username, I'm using Dymo. And you should use your own username. Mm. And let's validate the connection. That's great. And now let's create the data source. Uh, so in this case, we're going to select the public schema. And make sure we're using the house price fall table. So not house price. We're going to use house price fall table. And let's select. And let's import that one to the spicy so that for quick analysis. Um, and also before we visualize, you don't need to email me for a refresh. And also let's edit and preview the data. OK, uh, so now we have the data set. So we see that the year that has been built is integer. Uh, so let's first convert that one into a string format. And let's say we want uh, the year that has been built into the date format. So however, if we convert into date format, uh, it is not accurate. OK, uh, so let's convert that one back to a string format. So that means we need some other um, calculations. So let's add a calculated field. And let's call it year. And here, let's search date. And we are going to use a parser the date. OK, so double click. So now you can see parser the date. And we're going to parse the date from the year that has been built. So let's say year that has been built, comma, quotation mark. And we know the format. It only contains a year information. So we see Y, 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 Y. So that is the, uh, the year format that from how. So we tell that we're going to create a new field that is year. We're going to extract a year information from, from the built-in column. And now the format is, is year only has a year information. And let's save it. And now you can see we have the year format. And now if you just say, OK, so that information is, is correct. And second, so we want to see the unit price because we have the price and also area of the house. However, the most important feature of the, on the uh, house market is the unit price. So let's calculate a new field. Let's call it unit price. That equals uh, the price okay, divided by the area. So double click area. So unit price, that is a new column that contains the result that is price divided by the area. So let's save it. OK, uh, so now everything looks great. So let's uncheck the built-in uh, because that is uh, redundant to the um, the year that has been built. Um, next, let's filter out the data. So let's say we add a filter based on the year. We see that we want the, whole, the record that is after um, 1990, okay, January the 1st. So we want the record that is after 1990. So we want 
analyze. We don't want uh, those records that uh, too many years ago. OK, so now we have the data that is ready so we can save and visualize. OK, uh, so now we go to this uh, analysis panel so you can see that the data now is being imported and also actually it's it is success. So we have almost 400 rows imported into the spicy engine so that we can do the analysis pretty faster. Uh, let's first add a title. Uh, so you can decide how do you want to, to customize your title. So here I want to call it house price analysis. And you can add a description. OK, so analyze price in quick site. OK, and if that is a real project, you may also want to introduce more about your your analysis, like data source, uh, a very simple explanations of your each visualization and also how the user should use your data. OK. Uh, next, let's try some autographs. So let's say we want to see the number of records per house type. So if we simply click the house type, okay, and we all see that number of the records in each single house type. We can see the single family home has uh, uh, the most number of the records. Uh, if we go to the bottom, you can see the value is empty. So we can also drag the house type as a mirror. So that by default, we are measure the number of the records. OK, we are by default, we are measure the number of records and which is great. And you can also decide if you want descending or ascending. And if you, you can also decide the format. OK, uh, so now everything looks great. OK, uh, now let's create a new uh, visualization. So let's say new visual. Um, let's say that in this case, we want to, uh, we can also drag this one to the bottom. Okay, so we want to put that one up and we want to see, have a trend line. For this one, uh, we want to see the trend of the unit price. So let's first select unit price. And you can see by default, uh, quick site gave us a total so let's switch that one to average and let's also select the, the year of the house and you can see that quick site automatically put a year into the x axis um, and also gave us a line chart so that is very very nice and if you like you can also put the type into colors so now you can see that for different type of the house um, that we have the different uh, different colors. OK, uh, you can also drag it out if you don't like it. So let's remove. And another very important feature that on quick site is that let's put that longer. OK, is that you can enable some AI functions. So for example, you can add a forecast. And here we have see OK, so for the temporal, we had to make sure that we are aggregating at the year level. OK, so now we have a forecast. OK, so that in the future that how the unit price will look like. So that is uh, forecasted by AWS. OK, so that is very nice. Uh, let's also add some other uh, insights. So inside other text informations that generated from uh, your data. So let's add insight. And here, let's say we want to add anomaly detection. OK, we select that one. And let's put that one. OK, so let's resize the inside. OK, so let's put that one here. And you can see here uh, for the insight. Uh, for this insight, 
you need one temporal dimension, uh, one measures, and also one categorical data. So we have all of that. So let's say year. That should be go to temporal. And that is at the year level. And for the values, let's bring the unit price. And uh, we are looking at the average unit price. And for the categorical data, let's bring the house type. OK, so now it is ready. And let's get started. OK, and you can see that a currency, a currency. So how do you want to uh, apply the anomaly detection? So let's say we want to do it every day. So just in case that uh, your data has been constantly updated. And you can also choose where I want to analyze all the combinations of those categories. OK, so that may um, that will be slower. And however, that will give you more insights. OK, and there are also other selections which can lead to be more. Uh, for example, uh, you can define the, the threshold that um, to be considered a normally and also uh, later on, you can also check. So, do you want to uh, consider more fields, etc.? And also, do you want to enable an alert so that if some anomaly being detected, do you want to receive an email immediately? So, you can also configure that one. Okay. Uh, so, right now, let's see everything looks right. Uh, so, let's save and. Do you want to run it now or do you want to run as scheduled? So let's we want to run it now. OK, uh, so this may take a while. So while we, are, when, while we are waiting for this one, so let's add another insight. So let's say we want to uh, calculate. You can see there are a lot of insights that you can do, like calculate the growth rate matrix comparisons. Let's say we want to calculate the growth rate. OK, and also let's minimize this one because that is just simply a one sentence. OK, and let's drag that one here. And again, you can you can customize your layout. It's just uh, my layout, my preference. Um, OK, and it requires at least one temporal dimension. So let's say we add year. And again, we want to be uh, at a year level. For the values, I want to compare the average of the unit price. And you can see that four year compound growth rate uh, of average unit price is negative. So that means um, that there was a uh, decrease okay uh, you can also drag the house type if you like um, but here right now we don't have any change yet but we'll see that one later okay uh, you can also add uh, the more filters um, uh, you can also add more insights okay so here we can see that we already have some um, automatic insight that being created, okay. Uh, so for example, the highest year, so that highest year is uh, 20, uh, 2014 with every unit price of this, which is also can be indicated on this line chart. Um, and also lowest year that is to, uh, 1992, okay. Uh, so which you can add those one OK, so that's the minimal. So if you want, you can add that one directly. OK, uh, so let me just re remove that. OK, so those are the inside. Parameters will be uh, more complicated. Um, theme just means that you can change the color, etc. And also you can choose the settings so that scaling. Um, so let's say I want to be optimized. That one thing that I want to highlight is called action. So action means that you can define the customized action. So for example, that I select the, the first one. Uh, so that is a bar chart, and I define action. 
I say I want action to be a filter. That will be a uh, scope will be all fields and also that will apply to all the other uh, visualizations. Of course, you can also change which one you want or which one not. So let's say I want to apply this filter to all the other visualizations. And next, let's click Save. Okay. Uh, and now if you check, so now we can see for the, all the other visualizations, they are showing uh, the price and also insight for all the house records. So if now I select a single family home, and you can see the growth rate for single family home is actually positive. And you can see the growth rate for single family home only. Okay. So for those uh, existing uh, visualizations or the insights, you can always add in or change um, uh, different variables. For example, for this insight, so now we're looking at the four year compound growth rate for average unit price. So if you want to switch to the price, you can do that. So if you switch to price, and you can see that uh, for total price is that. So let's um, go back to the average unit price average. Okay. Um, and the same thing for this. Uh, uh, um, detection so anomaly detection so we know that there were no normally detected for the unit price so but what about the price so let's say we check that one to price okay and as we choose average price okay and let's wait a few uh, minutes to to wait for that one to be updated and while we are waiting for the updating so we can always we can also change the titles for each single chart. So this you can give it number of houses in house type. Okay, and for this one you can just growth rate. And this one, you can see average of unit price by year. That's that's pretty neat. Okay, and you can see inside configured. So we need to write again it's because we changed that one from unit price to price. So let's write. Okay, uh, so now you can see when we switch that uh, values to price, we did have one. Um, anomaly detected which is that there's a single family home was this price that is much higher than the average price and if you click explore the anomaly and you can see um, that result okay so that was detected on the first day uh, actually that was detected on the records in 2014 okay so that you can see this price is super super expensive okay great uh, so now we have everything ready. Again, you can configure those uh, auto insights. Um, let's say that they can execute. Ex they can execute those anomaly detection on hourly or daily or weekly basis. And also, you can got notified um, via email that if there's something changed. So suppose that you have uh, data that you have large sample data that are updating on a daily basis or. Uh, on regular basis. Let's finally share this um, dashboard. So let's share it, publish, and we can give it a name. So remember that the name will be your last name and the first name of your and also lab seven, so that I will recognize your submissions and I can give you the right uh, um, credits. So here I'm going to use demo. But in your case, you should be using your last name, first name, and also lab seven. Okay, uh, you can see you have advanced options. So do you want to enable the data downloads? If not, you can just uncheck that. And also do you want to enable sorts, click, uh, drill down, and also maximize, etc. Um, and let's publish the dashboard. Uh, you, you have to share this one with me by typing my GMU email, which is 
wrxx at gmu.edu okay and you can give me say that do you want me to uh, view your data only or do you want me to be able to add it to your data so i just say view it and share it so now you can see uh, right now this dashboard has been shared with myself my gmail that's owner and also my gmu email which um i will i will have access to your dashboard and i will give you uh, grades Okay, uh, so now if you go back, so now you can see we have three data sets. This is for the price for this lab. Uh, we have three analysis and a price, an house price analysis from this lab. And here you can see um, the dashboard that is created um, and also is shared with my GMU um, account. And also those two dashboards created from the lecture. And this is a dashboard that shared by others. So this is a dashboard that I created with my GMU account. And next, I share that um, uh, to my uh, Gmail account.